This screencast covers the material from Module 6, Lesson 16, where we're going to once again construct perpendicular line segments and go a little deeper by analyzing relationships between the coordinate pairs. Okay, for problem number one, we've got a few tasks here. It says, one, use the coordinate plane below to complete the following task. First task is to draw a line segment. Notice that it's line segment because we don't have any arrows in this line that's over the A, B. So we have two endpoints, endpoint A and endpoint B. So let's, uh, let's draw in that line segment with our straight edge. Okay, now that we've created our line segment, we need to plot point C with the coordinates of 0, 8. So we'll find 0 on our x-axis and then go up to 8. And we'll plot that in. And we'll label that C. Now we want to draw line segment AC. Now that we have a C drawn in, we need to explain how we know that CAB is a right angle. Well, we can use the triangles uh, that we've uh, worked with in the past. So if we look at our original line segment, AB, we can visualize the right triangle below it, where we have five units going horizontally and two vertically. And what we can do here now is talk about the other triangle, where we have two units horizontally and five units vertically. What we did is we kind of took this triangle and we flipped it and we slid it over into place like we did with the uh, right angle templates in our lesson today. So we can use that as our explanation talk about the triangles and how they are moved. Also can talk about the sum of the angles. Remember that a triangle, the sum of the angles, is always 180 degrees. And we know that this is a right triangle or so that angle is 90 degrees. So the sum of this angle and this angle must be the other 90 degrees. So let's take a look. So this angle is the same as this angle. We'll use another color. This angle is the same as this angle. So the sum of these two angles must be 90 degrees. The sum of these two angles is 90 degrees. When we do a complete 180, a straight angle, the sum is also 180 degrees. So if we took our 180 and we subtracted the measure of this angle then the measure of this angle, the resulting difference would be 90, uh, giving us a perpendicular line. It says Sean drew a picture to the right to find a segment perpendicular to AB. Explain why Sean is correct. Well, this is a little different than what we had done in the past, but uh, it clearly is perpendicular. And how do we know? All right, remember, again, we have our right triangles. And the sum of the angles is 180, and this angle is 90. So we have two other angles, and the sum of those other two angles must also be 90. So when I add this, and this, I have 90 degrees. Well, the second triangle, the corresponding uh, one to what we'd call, I guess, uh, the B here, is going to be right here. And the one corresponding to this one here is going to be right here. So the sum of these two angles must be 90 degrees. So if the sum of those angles is 90 degrees, well, that's what we have. The uh, inside of a perpendicular line. So that's one way to explain that. Uh, use diagrams, uh, mark up the chart, and use some words to explain your diagrams. Problem 2 has a number of tasks for us to do. It says use the coordinate plane below to complete the following tasks. Draw, draw line segment and note that it's line segment because we have a line over the letters Q and T without arrows on it. That means we have endpoints Q and T, so let's take care of that now. Next, we'll plot a point R at 2 and 6.5, and so we look at X is 2, <coughs> and a Y of 6.5. Get the correct tool there. Uh, let's move everything back into place. 
There's a little alteration here. There we go. Okay, and again, R at six or two and six and a half. So we have two and six and a half. So now we have point R. We want to draw a line, QR. Now that we've drawn that, we have to explain how we know that uh, uh, RQT is a right angle, and that would be this angle right here, RQT. How do we know it's a right angle? Well, again, we can draw some triangles here. And we can see that these triangles are identical, except they have been uh, sp flipped and spun around. So we know that this angle is 90. This angle and this angle measure the same. And these two angles are the same. So we know that the sum of the angles in a triangle is 180. If we have one right angle, the sum of the other two angles must be 90. So what do we have here? I have an angle here and an angle here. And those, the sum of those two is 90. We know that with a straight angle, from here to here, we have 180. So 180 minus 90 is 90. Therefore, this angle must be a right angle. In the next part, we need to compare the coordinates of point Q and T. What is the difference in the X and the Y coordinates? Well, if we look at the X coordinates, the X coordinates for T are greater than, and by how much, we have three and a half, four and a half, five and a half, or excuse me, one, three and a half, four and a half, five and a half, six. Uh, the difference is it's greater, uh, two and a half units greater, so equals two and a half units greater. And my y coordinates are one and a half greater, and I really should provide more of an explanation for that. So when I talk about this, I, I would say the coordinates of uh, T, the X coordinate is two and a half greater than Q, and the Y coordinate is one and a half greater than Q. So now we need to finally compare the coordinates of Q and R. So let's talk about the difference in the X coordinates. Well, in the case of the X coordinates, we go from here to here. The x coordinate again it starts at three and a half, and it goes to two. So what do we have? We have its uh, x is one and a half less than. And again, we should write a complete sentence. And the y <coughs> is one half, two, three, four, five, five halves, which is two and a half greater. So the y is two and a half greater. So we need to look at the relationship between these two. We see that we have the numbers reversed, right? The difference uh, here, we have 2.5 for x, we have 2.5 for y. We have 1.5 for y and 1.5 for x, although these two are different in this regard, that the y is 1.5 greater and the x is 1.5 less. In part G, we're asked, what is the relationship between the differences you found in E and F to the triangles in which these two segments are apart? Well, the differences we discussed previously, so we, we switched the uh, two and a half difference between the X and the Y, same with the one and a half difference. We had one that was greater than and one that was less than. Okay, we need EF containing the following points, 4, 1, and 8, 7 for F. I'm going to plot them on this grid, even though it's not a perfect situation here, because we don't go all the way to the uh, 8 out here, but we have 4, 1, and 8, and 7. So I'm up 7, and I'm going to have to go about out to here, so we're going to be talking about a line about out to there. So I want a number that's perpendicular. Well, we can also take a, uh, a line that's perpendicular. We can also look at the relationship here. Uh, with x, we go plus 4. And with y, we go plus 6. We can actually get these uh, by switching our numbers around. So I can take my 1 that's in my 
y and make that my x. And I can take my 8 in my x and make that my y. And I can now take my 7 in my uh, y value here, make it my x, and then we can take the 4 from the other one. Switching these numbers around, we actually get lines that are perpendicular.